So disclaimer, GPU bio flashing can be no bueno. Just kind of like your motherboard BIOS flashing. Anytime you do any type of flashing of your BIOS, you take a risk of breaking the graphics card or the motherboard in the sense that you can put the wrong BIOS, you can have a glitch, you can have a short power outage, anything that could disrupt the process or potentially putting in the wrong BIOS on it could have bad effects and you'll have an expensive paperwork. So if you're gonna do this, do this at your own risk and play it safe. So first things first, if you're gonna flash your BIOS, whether it's your GPU or your motherboard, make sure number one, you're not doing it uh, during a thunderstorm like I'm doing right now and number two just have backup power supplemental power because if you lose power during the flashing process you will break it it will get corrupted can you bring it back yes it's tricky it requires taking a second graphics card and popping this one in one of the lower slots just right over here and then with NV flash and I'll talk about that later you can actually select which graphics card you want to flash and flash the BIOS to it and hopefully that should restore it unless it just fried the chip I've seen that happen a few times but let's talk about the perfect ideal scenario where everything works perfectly so to get started we're gonna need software tech power up website we're gonna need GPU Z and Nvidia NV flash now if you have an AMD graphics card I actually did a video on that I'll post a link to it you can download the AMD VB flash ATI ATI flash and I'll have links all this stuff in the description so if you guys need to get onto this website this is where you can do it but pretty much you're gonna load tech power ups website go to the download section and just get GPU Z and NV flash fairly simple now once you do that you need to go to their databases over here and hit VGA BIOS collection it'll take you to this screen over here and I've already selected the graphics card I want but you can put the brand the vendor the model uh, if they have different bio versions bus interface I mean you can really narrow down what you're looking for so now the question is what am I looking for what bios do I get what model of the card do I have well I like tech power ups GPU Z it works fantastic because it's gonna tell you and it's a tattletale if it's a fake card or whatever but pretty much it's gonna tell you what GPU you have so we can see over here Nvidia GF GeForce RTX 3060 sub vendor EVGA the device ID number it's gonna tell us the bios that we have 94062500063 so at least we know what we're looking for then you need to take a look at the card if you have the box or not but if you take a look at the card it will tell you so in this case EVGA GeForce RTX is the XC model it's not the XC black it's not the XC gaming it is just the XC model and if you look on the back where they have the stickers sometimes the stickers will tell you the individual model that you have so make sure you get the right bios for the card that you have now if your card is acting all wonky this part might not apply to you but pretty much in this case this card is running fine it has no issues this bios is good what you can do is you can actually go right over here to this icon right over there where it says save bios back up a copy of the original bios you can save it somewhere that way if you run into an issue where the bios you put in is not compatible it's corrupt and you need your original bios you can use the backup of what you have in there. Now back on Tech Power Up's website, I can see right over here, this is the RTX 3060 12 gig. This is the XC model, tells me the date and the version, which is the same version as the one I have. Now the question you might ask is, can I flash it to the XC Black or the XC Gaming, which um, they may run a slightly higher boost clock? Well, yeah, you can, but you do take the risk. The card may take it it may not take it some cards are different I've had cards where I'm able to boost it up to kind of the higher tier model with no issues I've had cards where it doesn't take it and then I have to go reflash it so you kind of do it at your own risk experiment as you need but just remember these cards are not cheap three to four hundred to even thousand to two thousand dollars just depending on the cards you have do you really want to try to push the limits on it and end up with expensive paperweight unless you got the skills to uh, flash it another way so now what you need to do first is once you download the ROM, you're going to see it's going to have this long name EVGA RTX 3060 122 dot whatever da da da. Make it simple. A lot of times I'll just hit it, just hit properties and just kind of rename it and just put something. Um, I could put whatever I want. One, two, three, four. It just needs to say ROM. It has to be the one linked to the card. You can put whatever name you want on it, but I'm just going to use one, two, three, four because it's going to be easier to type uh, once we use NV flash. So once you've downloaded NV Flash and the BIOS, what you want to do is create a folder on your C drive, not C Windows desktop, just on C, because you're going to be able, you're going to need to when you go to the print command prompt, type CD space NV Flash to get to it instead of going through the desktop, Windows, all that stuff. So create a new folder right over here. I name mine's NV Flash, and what you're going to do is you're just going to drag and drop, which I've already done, and put your BIOS 
right in here and you're also going to put the NV flash software right in there. Now next thing we want to do is kind of put your search type CMD which is going to take you to command prompt. You're going to see C users, whatever you named your computer. I named mine user one. But what you're going to do is to kind of get back out of there, just type CD space backslash. And that's going to put us at C. Now, because we named it NV flash, all we got to do is type CD space NV flash. And now we're in the folder. So now that we have NV Flash up and running, what you're going to want to do is actually go to Device Manager and hit your display adapter, and you're going to want to disable this device. And here's why. I have actually run into issues where a program in the background activates the graphics card, creates an issue, and then I get a corrupt BIOS, and then I'm having to go back and try to uh, flash it using a second graphics card, and yeah, it's a nightmare. Disable it. You'll still be able to use Windows, you'll be able to do the NV Flash, and you'll have no issues. It's a good safety method to make sure that graphics card is not activated or pulled while it's doing that. Now that now that you have that done, the next command that you want to type is NV Flash 64, because that's the version we downloaded, space dash 6, and the name of the BIOS. I named it EVGA3060.ROM, and press enter. Your screen is going to flicker, don't panic. So it's going to tell you what your current BIOS is, which mine is this version. It's going to tell you replace with this version, update display firmware adapter, press yes. When you do that, the screen will flicker. And then when it's done, it's kind of going to do something like this. I'm not going to update it because it's the same BIOS, but all I'm going to do is you would press yes. Once you do that, it'll bring you back to this screen. The screen may flicker. It may take a minute or two, but once you get back to the screen, you're done. All you need to do is reboot your computer. Once you reboot your computer, if everything boots up, you have no artifacting, no glitching, that means you have a successful flash. Well, how do you confirm if the BIOS took? Well, that's why we use Tech Power Up's GPU-Z. And what you'll do is you'll check the BIOS version to make sure the version that they have over here matches with the version that you installed. If that's installed, do a quick stress test, make sure the fans are still working, everything's working good, and you're ready to go. Now, if the card does get bricked or you run into some issue like that then you'll have to install a secondary card well put this as a secondary card and then put your a primary card that does work up there or use the motherboards uh, VGA you use NV flash and then the command lines are different I'll post the link to uh, the commands that you'll do but pretty much you'll put dash dash list which will show you the cards that you have you could put um, NV flash use the index command to set it to the correct card and then do the flash for that um, I don't have a secondary card right now to show that, but I want to share that information and I'll post the link to a guide on how to do that. So flashing your VGA BIOS, it's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward, but it does have some risk. One of the reasons that you might want to do this is number one, instabilities. Number two, if somebody had a mining BIOS on there and you got a great deal on the card, you can flash it to the original BIOS. And another thing that I have found is I've had cards that they've degraded where the initial BIOS on it and the clocks that they had on it just would crash the card, but by using a different version that had lower clocks on the card, it actually made the card more stable and I would have no issues with it. So something to consider. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see what we come up with next.